Hey everyone, David J here yet again. Gear demonstration for my friends at Maxon Effects. Today I'm demoing the CP9 Pro Plus compressor pedal. Before we get started, let's talk about what a compressor even does, because I know that question is going to come up. Essentially, a compressor takes your loudest notes and your softest notes and kind of gives it a bit of a squish to give you a more even, consistent, sustained tone. And then because it's a little squish, you can raise up the volume on the way out. Again, it just gives you a more, uh, a better, more consistent kind of sound, okay? It can be used aggressively to get this like chewy kind of thing, which I actually love to do over a clean channel. It sounds really good. But overall, you don't want to squash your dynamics with a compressor pedal. It's just to give us a little bit more sing to our notes. So let's get started. Let's get on the floor and take a look at this compressor. Okay, so we've got the Maxon CP9 Pro Plus on the pedal board. Let's start out by talking about the features. Okay, we've got threshold, a reduction LED indicating when your signal is actually being affected. Um, you've got a ratio knob and you've got a gain knob. So let's talk about some of the things that you know this will do. Your threshold is where you're going to set the point at which the compressor starts to actually function, okay? A high threshold means it's not really gonna affect much, okay? You gotta bring that threshold down so that it starts hitting the signal. Once it hits the signal, how much is going to be affected and released, that's up to the ratio knob. If your ratio is one to one, it's not gonna do anything. That means one decibel in, one decibel out. If it's two to one, it means it's taking two in and only spitting one out, okay? This goes up to infinity, which is essentially in limiter type of situations where you just want to constantly have a brick wall on top, not letting the volume go above a certain, you know, capacity, I guess is a good scientific word to use. <laughs> anyway, uh, the gain is simply your output, okay? When you compress something, the volume is going to come down, okay? If you, if you set your levels, uh, sorry, if you set your, uh, you know, settings for your threshold and ratio and you're getting some reduction happening and you step off the pedal and you're like, okay, um, the, without the pedal, my signal's a lot louder. Okay, step back on the pedal and start bringing your gain back up to match what it would be doing without the pedal, okay? And you're getting the benefit of the compression, but still at the same volume. That's the beauty of it. It takes your real high highs and your real low lows and gives them a bit of a squeeze, and then you can bring the whole thing up and spit that out for a much more consistent uh, and sustained type of tone. Okay, uh, this is a VCA compressor. There's essentially two types, VCA and optical. Optical is much more subtle, usually uh, a lot quieter. Some compressors can get kind of loud. Um, this one, however, has, uh, they've gone in and redone the circuitry. It's a VCA, but it has a super low noise floor, which is awesome. Tons of headroom, so you can really do a lot of great clean compression to it. It's not going to affect your, you know, noise uh, at all, really, which is a, a, a feat for a VCA compressor. Um, anyway, let's get on with some playing now that we went through all the geek stuff, right? So how do you usually use a compressor? I like to use them very subtly, actually, because I don't want to kill my dynamics. If I'm playing nice and soft, I don't want something forcing that back up. Or if I'm cranking on something, I don't want something really smashing that back down. I don't want to ruin my dynamics. Dynamics is what separates the men from the boys when you're a musician. So you want to have great uh, range in your dynamics. However, a little bit of help keeping the sound as consistent as possible is always great, especially for you guys out there doing a lot of legato type stuff. Uh, you'll know that sometimes it's hard to keep that going. The sustain is not really there, um, in which case you have to crank up a distortion or overdrive pedal. That leads to noise, worse gain, uh, sorry, worse tone, um, all that kind of stuff. A compressor can certainly help with that kind of stuff, okay? So usual settings, you know, two to one here on the ratio, somewhere around there. You know, your threshold, you know, you might have to start cranking. You can see the threshold uh, hitting the signal through the uh, reduction LED, even there. All right, there it's stopped, so we want to kind of bring it up to there. Again, this depends on your pickups and your guitar, how hard you're hitting. You just want a tiny bit. I think that's a good place to start. Again, the, the forget the numbers on it. Just look at the LED and understand when it's actually being affected. But the two to one ratio um, is not really doing too much, so it's a nice subtle type of usage. And then... 
by stepping on and off of the pedal, I don't really hear a volume you know, uh, difference. So I know my gain is set at a pretty good level. Now, again, this may not be audible to you, and that's okay. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, if it was audible, it would be much more of an effect, okay? It's just a matter of being subtle and doing what it's supposed to do. So let me demonstrate this. Um, let's play a note here like an E. Okay, that's a pretty long sustain. The compressor is doing a little bit to help that, but not much at this level. Let's t step off of the compressor. Okay, and it's still there, okay? But we get a little bit more help from the compressor. I'm playing this, you can see the reduction LED being lit up because the threshold is being hit. It's starting to compress. It's going to tame down some of these notes that are flying out of the amp. Um, and it's gonna bring up some of them that are quieter. Now when I step off of it, again, it may not sound like it's doing anything, but it is. You have to kind of trust it and let it know and let yourself know that uh, it is giving you a bit more consistent sound. Now in a clean situation like this, I am going through an overdrive and then into the compressor, but the overdrive is off, and then into the Z-Rec, which is, you know, completely clean right now. Sometimes I like to use compressors as an effect to get this nice, chewy, clean kind of thing happening, especially for chord, uh, funk type of stuff. Uh, so what you do there is crank up your threshold all the way, and take your ratio, and you can either crank it up all the way or maybe go up to like 10 to 1 ratio. And now listen to what it's doing. It has really squashed down the sound here versus... All right, now that's full volume. The compressor is squashing my sound, so I need to bring up the gain to make it unity again. That sounds about right, but again, what's happening is it's gonna make it a lot punchier, you're gonna get a lot more sustain out of it, and it's taking, again, over a clean channel, um, it's kind of, you know, everything is letting loose. A lot of low frequencies, a lot of high frequencies, and sometimes that can become a problem. A compressor can just tame that a little bit. And again, at this, at these extreme settings, uh, this is kind of more like an effect, it's, it is doing like a chewy kind of thing here, but it's awesome. <laughs> nice kind of sustain behind it. So again, it's not supposed to be the most obvious type of effect. It's supposed to just give you subtle help to make your tone better. And again, I mean, I've got my overdrive here. I don't really need to even use it, but if we put our settings back down to like, you know, something normal. run an overdrive through a compressor or before it, which is what a lot of people do. Um, again, same thing. It will help give you more sustain. It will tame your low notes and your high notes and give you, you know, that kind of great effect. So compressors are often misunderstood and underappreciated because they're not like a delay or an overdrive or a reverb. They're much more subtle, but they can add a lot of great help to your tone. If you find that you have, you know, your, your highs or lows are just flying out and there's a lot of inconsistency, try a compressor. Bring down some of that, you know, some of the peaks and some of the valleys, make everything much more consistent, okay? Hope that helps understand what a compressor is doing. This one in particular, the CP9 Pro Plus, is second to none because of all the features uh, that are inside and out of it. Uh, it is true bypass, if I didn't mention that before. Um, for more information, you can go to maxoneffects.com. I'm David J. I'll see you soon.